I'm Erica McAllister and I'm a curator of flies and I am under the streets of London in the vault of the Linnaean Society. I believe there's many superpowers exhibited across the natural world and one of these superpowers is shape-shifting. This is the ability of an organism to change its body form from one distinct phase to another and they scientifically we call this metamorphosis. This specimen I have here is the large bee fly, also called the dark edge bee fly, Bombylius major. It's because it's large for the major, and Bombylius is because it mimics bees. The bee fly is a rather large, squat, incredibly hairy fly, and one of the distinctive features about it is its very long mouth part, or proboscis. As such, it's often described as a fluffy flying narwhal. This fly, as with most species of flies, goes through four complete changes of form through its life cycle. You have the egg, the larvae, the pupil, and then the adult form. This species, however, undergoes something quite extraordinary. During the larval stage, they do not just have one body form, but they have two very distinct, very different body forms a term referred to as hypermetamorphosis. The bee flies saw a problem and overcame it with the hypermetamorphosis. To overcome the obstacle of not hatching near your food source, the larvae of the bee fly has decided to further split that stage into two which are more suitable for their purpose. The first stage is a very active stage, it's very thin, and it's specifically designed for the larvae to go and find its host. The second stage, a much more grub-like form, is now no longer in an active phase and it's very sedentary and it needs to concentrate solely on feeding. I often refer to them at this stage as sleeping bags with mouths. The female bee fly, the adult, when she lays her eggs, she has quite an extraordinary process that she goes through. To help with the dispersal of her eggs, the adult female bee fly has an abdominal sac, basically her bag, on the end of her abdomen, which she fills with sand. When she lays her egg midair, she catches it with her legs, and she then wraps this sand around the egg to act as ballast. So when she exhibiting the worst example of parental care, hurls her egg to get as close as possible to the entrances, if not through, the nests of solitary bees and wasps. So although she can't often throw them down the hole, she can throw them near them. So when the larvae hatches, the first stage, the active stage, has a greater opportunity to get as rapidly as possible to go down these nests. Because these larvae, the second stage, is feeding on baby bees. 